today to hopefully bring you a word of encouragement and give you some things to think about and, and a new way to look at maybe a scripture that you know but you really hadn't um, thought about in this way. Um, the last few weeks, um, I know that we're all you know preparing for the warmer weather and um, one of the things that I've personally been doing and I hope that everyone else is, um, is preparing my feet for sandal weather. And the other day I was sitting there and um, I was working on, you know, getting my feet ready to be seen by the world and got to thinking about how, you know, our souls um, are not only seen by God, but by the people that we interact with on a regular basis. And um, I started thinking about how, you know, just like our feet as we prepare for warm weather, we need to have our heart always prepared to um, be seen by those that we come in contact with and especially ready for God to hear our thoughts and know the true desires of our heart. And um, one of the scriptures that I think about is um, Psalm 51. And the whole psalm is a um, song to God. And um, let me read that for you. It says, have mercy on me, God, according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. Wash me completely clean of my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Because I know my wrongdoings, my sin is always right in front of me. I've sinned against you, you alone. I've committed evil things in your sight. That's why you're justified when you render your verdict completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yes, I was born in guilt and sin from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most secret place. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crushed rejoice once more. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away my guilty deeds. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside of me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach wrongdoers your ways and sinners will come back to you. Deliver me from violence, God, God of my salvation, so that my tongue can sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. You don't want sacrifices. If I gave an entirely burnt offering, you wouldn't be pleased. A broken spirit is my sacrifice, God. You won't despise a heart, God, that is broken and crushed. Do good things for Zion by your favor. Rebuild Jerusalem's walls. Then you will again want sacrifices of righteousness, entirely burnt offerings, and complete offerings. Then bulls will again be sacrificed at your altar. The reason I think of this scripture is because, you know, during Lent, we're to check ourselves, to purify our hearts, to bring to God a great sacrifice. And um, just like that, we're cleansing our souls. Well, today I want to talk about, you know, our soul maintenance. Because um, it's one thing to, to pray it one time, but our souls, just like our feet, need that continual maintenance to remain clean and to remain um, in a state where people want to see it or we want others to see it. Um, and so thinking about that, I, I, thinking about sandal season, you know, most of us, we have to make it a priority. We have to take time, whether it's to um, schedule an appointment at a salon for a, a pedicure, which right now is really, you know, just now becoming available again, or we have to schedule time in our schedule to, you know, do that cleansing, that purging of the old nail polish or the purging of the calluses, um, and we have to schedule that. And it's the same with God. We have to set an appointment with God 
to not only pray, but to read his word, to hear from God, and to be made new. And so the next thing is to, you know, create that space, you know, whether it's at your dining room table or in your um, living room, setting in your favorite recliner or in your bedroom. Um, you know, we have to have a space that we go to to really focus on our prayer to God and really focus on that time that we've set aside. Um, and then the, the cleansing. Um, I know right now we're all kind of, you know, in isolation and and that does kind of give us a unique opportunity to cleanse things from our life. And, and when I say cleanse, you know, we have to cut away the, the things that are dead, the things that are unprofitable um, in our lives. And some of those things might be negative people or situations. And this um, isolation has kind of um, helped us to do that or, you know, to eat a healthier diet. I've heard a lot of people say um, when we come out of this quarantine, we're all going to be, you know, 10 to 15 pounds heavier, and that's possible. But we have to choose a healthier diet. We have to choose to feed our body in a way that is pleasing to God. Um, we need to get out and move more, whether it's, um, you know, just taking a walk um, or, you know, maybe you've got a treadmill or an elliptical at your home. You know, we need to move more. Our body needs to be tended to. We need to declutter our schedules. This quarantine really has helped with that. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, that they've enjoyed having more time in their schedule since there's things that they can't do. Um, personally, I'm one of those who really has enjoyed having more time at home with my husband and my kids and really getting to teach them things that during our regular schedule we don't have time for. Um, and so we have to declutter our schedules and I don't know what that looks like for you. Um, only you can decide that, but, you know, look at that and see what things you haven't been doing and that you've really enjoyed having the time that that takes away. Um, and we have to learn to put the phone down. I am, um, increasingly becoming dependent on my little mobile device and, um, we have to learn to put that down. A lot of times we get um, hooked on the Facebook or the Instagram or the news feeds and the sports feeds, which right now there's no sports, but those are getting ready to start as well. But we watch these, um, the, the feeds that come up on our phones and it just feeds the anxiety and it feeds the, the destruction of our soul. And so that's one of those things that we need to do to cleanse our souls is to learn to put the phone down, learn to turn off the news, turn off the TV, whatever is distracting you from God. Um, set some perimeters and some limits. God needs you to do that so that your soul can be in the place that it needs to be. Um, we also need to cut out the baggage from the past. I know a lot of us carry around, um, you know, feelings of hurt, feelings of guilt, feelings of resentment. And, um, you know, God doesn't want that for us. And there's a lot of times where, you know, we, we feel validated in carrying that around. But God tells us in his word to lay those at his feet and to forgive those that even though we may not feel like they deserve forgiveness, um, we need to forgive as we've been forgiven. I know I can look at my life and know that God has forgiven me of some of the most unforgivable things I feel. And um, if God can grant me that grace, how much more grace can I grant those around me? And so, you know, we need to purge ourselves of the, the baggage of our past. You know, the, the great thing about grace is I am no longer who I was 10, 15, 20 years ago. I am no longer the self-absorbed teenager I was in my middle school and high school years. I am no longer the sinner that I was before Christ accepted me as one of his own. I'm no longer who I was. So we need to cut ties with that past that maybe we're hanging on to. And we need to let go of those pent up emotions about things that we can't change. You know, and a lot of times that means 
really taking responsibility for the things that we had a part in and giving grace to those that we didn't have a part in. So once we've cut away the calluses, once we've opened our heart to God, once we've prayed that prayer of redemption to Jesus, the last thing that we need to do is to continue the maintenance. Right now has been a great time for a lot of people. I hear a lot of our friends saying, you know, they've had a lot more time to do Bible study, to read more of the Bible, to watch other people's churches. Um, and, to, and even our family has mentioned, you know, they watch our church services, and normally they don't get to do that because they're further away or they're at their own church. And there's a lot more Jesus being absorbed right now. And um, I just think, how great would it be if it was always like that? If we were always, you know, seeking to be a part of another church's service. Um, I know Jeremy and I have a couple pastor friend, or pastors that we watch their sermons on a regular basis. Um, you know, as a pastor, it's really hard when you're planning all of the services and you have a hand in a service. It's really, it's a, it's rejuvenating to be able to listen to another church service, to watch another pastor bring the message of God, and really to be able to absorb that message because you don't get to do that on your own. So um, I encourage you right now to just continue to do those things even after quarantine is over, even after we start working on what is the new normal. You know, don't look back at the past and mourn for the things that we used to have. Look at the, the, the adventure that lays ahead of us as we carve out and create what our new normal looks like. A less busy schedule, a less drawn life back to you know the things that we did have that kind of hindered us from a full relationship with God. And you know, just as our feet need continual tending after they've undergone their transformation, your soul needs that tending daily. You need to have a time, whether it's waking up 10 or 15 minutes earlier each day, to start your day with prayer and Bible study. Or whether it's, you know, ending your day, sitting and just, you know, praying and meditating and telling God, you know, the great things that have happened that day and thanking Him and praising Him for, you know, the awesome ways that He's worked in that day. Um, you know, keep up that progress. Don't regret. Don't regress and go back to the things that you regretted. Um, and in making that time daily, you know, maybe that means meditation. Um, there's lots of great things out there on different ways to meditate and to open your heart to God. Maybe it's drawing or coloring. Um, I've got several coloring books at the house. And, um, you know, I can sit and just do one of those adult coloring books. And my mind, where my hand is busy, my mind is praying. My mind is at peace with God. Um, maybe it's taking a walk or working in your garden, just being a part of nature, enjoying God's creation. And, um, you know, I find that I, I end up praying during my nature walks or when I'm gardening. Some of my best sermons have come out of time with my hands in the dirt. Um, maybe it's journaling. I don't necessarily journal myself. I'm not a really good person at writing down my um, feelings, but uh, I... I'm sure that my kids and my husband can attest to the fact that, you know, you can see my journaling through the pictures that I took on my phone, you know, um, through this quarantine time. A lot of my pictures that I've been taking are just so that I can remember what was happening on that day, um, what things we did, what did we cook, what was a new recipe that we tried, you know, so that when we look back I can say, oh yeah, that happened when we were stuck at home enjoying time together. So in whatever way you choose, don't forget that your soul needs quenching just as much as your body does. So, you know, seek Christ daily. Get that nourishment, that food and that water, that living water that he offers to each one of us. And if you've not made that commitment to Christ, um, you know, I, I, would hope that 
as you begin this journey of cutting away the old and nourishing the new, that you would ask Christ to live in your heart, that you would ask him to help you to become a new creature, worthy not only of God's enjoyment, but worthy of your friends and your family and those who are um, a part of your life. May they see Christ in you. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this time together. We give you thanks for your written word. And Lord, we also give you thanks for the opportunity to come to you in prayer, to lift before you our lives, and to ask you to purge from our life anything that is unpure to you. God, help us to um, just seek you daily. Help us to make a commitment, not only to you, but to ourselves, that we will be nourished through your love and through your guidance. Lord, guide us each day. Help us to find ways that are um, encouraging to those around us to be more like you. Help us to be more like you. And help us to always, above all things, love you with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. And God, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, friends.